So at first glance, this might not look like it's a good result, but in reality, this is actually a fantastic result. And let me show you what I mean by that. Right now, we're talking about the F3 ESC, the microcontroller unit's performance. Today's video, we're going to be taking a look at two Hollybro ESCs. This is the latest and greatest that's currently on the market and that is compatible with the latest hardware. So what do I mean by that? Well, right now, the latest or the best microcontroller unit that can be used on an ESC is on these two. And you, some people might not know what a microcontroller unit is. It's a, just a CPU. It's a CPU for these guys. And these tend to be slightly more expensive. And luckily now, Hollybro has released their, we can call budget line stack. It's still a premium ESC, but it's dropping its price down into a pretty attractive price here. This is the mother of all ESCs right here. This is just insane. This is this one right here. This is called the Hollybro Tico 32 Metal. I have them linked down below. But before we get into this one, Let's talk a little bit about F3s. So the F3 ESCs here. Now, what is the benefit of an F3 ESC? So back then when Holly Rose actually working on an F3 ESC, they actually sent me the standalone two of them, two ESCs. They were standalone ESCs with like two capacitors. I wasn't supposed to show anybody. They just threw them at me. They said, hey, run these on your noise test and let us know how they perform. So it was like a beta F3. I never really noticed the F3 microcontroller unit until later on. So I tested them and I was quite surprised. Why? The noise was insane. I mean, it was still noisy, but compared to any other ESC, like a BB2 chip ESC, an F1 ESC, there was a noticeable decrease in noise, which just had me baffled. Like I was like, what the hell is going on? I tried different motors. And then I came down to the conclusion after I knew it was an F3 microcontroller unit, because I never really flipped it over. I just stuck it on the bench and tested it for them. And I uh, just gave them my results. And what I've noticed is, as, as I'm testing more and more F3s, they are less noisy. But what does that mean? You know, they're not like super clean, less noisy. But the reason for the less noise is that they're running more efficient and they're able to give the power exactly when it's needed. It's not overshooting or undershooting. So theoretically, and from the tests, it shows that the F3 ESCs do perform slightly better in power delivery, efficiency. Now, what do I mean by efficient? Well, the more efficient it is, the better the power delivery. And by better power delivery, what I mean is it'll give the motor exactly the power it needs not to overshoot and undershoot. And I'll explain what that means in a bit. So every motor, as you can tell, has three phases here. And each phase, one would be a ground, one would be a neutral, and one would be a positive. And they keep switching back and forth in order to keep the motor spinning. Now, when this is going on and the motor is spinning, whenever it spins past a magnet, there is voltage that actually comes back into the ESC and that tells the microcontroller unit, oh, hey, I just passed by phase A, so it knows to turn on phase B because there's no sensors inside the motor. Now, what the F3 does slightly different is it calculates that and it gets that right on point and it's able to give the power exactly when the motor actually needs it. Reduces desyncs, reduces voltage spikes, reduces a backward inrush of current because two phases turn on at the same time. Now, if you don't know this, if you touch two phases at the same time, it'll actually stop the motor. It'll break the motor, not break it, but like break it, like slow it down. So in terms of F3, you do get a lot of great benefits. There's still a letdown, in my opinion, with the BL Heli 32. Now, when we first heard about the BL Heli 32 software being released, the main feature everybody wanted was that the ESC can give you telemetry data, the RPM, the temperature, the current draw. You can limit the current draw. You can, yes, you can actually do that. But probably some of you didn't even know that because, you know, the, the, the latest ones are not really incorporating that feature. And also you can get the voltage reading directly from the ESCs. So you can get a lot of really nice information. However, with the latest four in one ESCs, because they're trying to put so much in there, we're not seeing that. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, what would have to happen for us to limit the current for, we can actually choose how much current is, is being limited. So we can say, I want the whole ESC to get 20, 20 amps, 20 amps, and 20 amps. And that would require one of these here, one of these here, one of these here, and one of these here. And then we'd be able to limit the ESC's output current and then thus give us a very smooth battery saving quadcopter. But again, there's other uses that where you can use that for, but it's really nice feature that I think 
Um, I actually really would like right now. I kind of missed that feature. And, you know, all these latest ones are missing that main feature. But then again, I don't blame them because then we're going to have possibly more problems because then the power traces on the PCB will be smaller in order to, co to incorporate these in every single corner or the ESC might have to be larger. So that is one of the letdowns in my opinion for BL Heli 32. But if you are looking for a mid range proper ESC, then you're going to want to go with an F3 more than anything. And this one also proved my previous testing correctly which we're also going to take a look at the noise testing of these two guys right now i have tested the metal 4-in-1 eac this is just an update video this is my fourth one here um and it's a beast 6s 4s 5s whatever the hell you throw at it it'll just handle however saying that i'm not saying to use it without a low esr capacitor i'm telling you not to use any more escs without a low esr capacitor especially with the current motors that we have in the market the current batteries that can actually give that much power but on 6s you'd want to add the low esr capacitor and they do provide that out of the box for you keep that in mind now i'm not saying these can't handle but sometimes you know if you crash there's a huge voltage spike i mean on 6s that thing can go up to 60 volts Bam, you burn something. So keep that in mind. Always add that low ESR capacitor. Don't half ass it and just trust me on that. Now, let's go and take a look at the noise testing. And also, these two are linked down below. Highly recommended. I've used this one on a bunch of builds so far and I actually just found this in one of my drawers. I was so happy that I still have another one left over. And uh, this one's going to be up going on a 6S build to actually test it in the field. So let's go take a look at the noise testing and we'll continue from there. All right, so here is the best example that you're possibly ever see. right now what we're looking at is a tico 32 40 amp esc not the metal right now we've tested that previously but right now we're looking at the new budget f3 esc because i have a similar esc with the same amount of filtration going on for it but using a different microcontroller unit and it's going to be a pretty interesting result so let's just take a quick look at this now on the right side here we have the tico 32 without a low esr capacitor on the right with a low esr capacitor see what a big difference a low esr capacitor makes which is why you should always add it now at first glance what you might notice with that without the low esr capacitor is that it does look noisy so what is noise noise is just voltage going up and down a lot and that creates noise and that seeps into your gyro that seeps into your video feed that gives you lines and it gives you mid throttle oscillation, so which is going into your gyro. So at first glance, this might not look like it's a good result, but in reality, this is actually a fantastic result. And let me show you what I mean by that. Right now, we're talking about the F3 ESC, the microcontroller unit's performance. So look at these two. This is the iFlight Sucks X 60 amp plus noise uh, tested. This is a simulated aggressive flight maneuver. It's the same exact test with the same amount of filtration but you can see the difference. Now, some of you might not know what the hell you're looking at, but the Tico is better. Why? Because the red line simulates or shows you where the voltage was at most of the time. As you can tell, it's confined because you want this line to be as flat as possible. So we see that the Tico 32 40 amp with the F3 is doing that much better than this one right here. So in reality, the Tico 32 is actually being much more efficient and producing the power correctly. And again, it doesn't even have that much filtration going on for it. But you saw it with the low ESR capacitor, it was basically perfect. But I'm just showing you raw performance here. This is the best way I can simulate this for you and show you firsthand what do I mean. But not only that, I didn't mention something earlier, which is sometimes I push an ESC a bit further than usual till I see jitters actual desyncs i can simulate desyncs in escs and what, what that the way that i do that is because i write a custom program that changes the throttle levels dramatically like i could burn motors super easy with it so what i do is i keep pushing it pushing it pushing it making it more aggressive more aggressive more aggressive and if an esc stutters even on just the basic tests for example the dys arias the latest ones did have those stutters and some T motors had those stutters and some other things also, I don't remember what, but some other things had some stutters and I usually tell you in the noise testing. Um, however, this did not have it. And I pushed, I pushed, I pushed and I stopped pushing because I didn't want to burn the motor and I didn't want to buy a new motor. And um, I have yet to push one that hard, which is a good thing because it didn't desync. It was still like I told you, it's calculating its phases correctly 
which is a huge, huge thing. And it's a really great thing. This is why everyone will be going into F3s, even though they're slightly more expensive, but give it some time and it'll be fine. And now they're not an experimental firmware. They're actually mature. They've been in the market for a while. And this is a, I think I would say like a perfect comparison. It's really hard to say perfect, but I think this is a really great comparison to put it into perspective, what you're getting with an F3. And um, yeah, this is this is the best way I can show this to most of you because I know a lot of people don't understand this stuff and I'm trying to make it much more simple than I used to. But then again, what I'm trying to say is that the Tico 32 ESCs, the 40 amp and the middle are really great ESCs. And yeah, that's currently it. And um, I'll have them on a build soon. I've tested the middle a bunch of times, so I know that one's very good. Uh, the Tico 40 amp is coming on a six build, success build, so we're going to see how its real world performance is. But from seeing it on the bench, the bench never fails me. If I know the ESC might burn, and ESC actually it would burn on the, on the bench there. I've burned a couple ESCs, you guys know about them, and I let you guys know. And even though I let you guys know, you guys went off on me. <laughs> you guys went off on me. Week, two weeks later, everybody's ESC was burning up in the air. And it was a Hobbywing ESC. But now they fix all that stuff. So yeah. These tests do show some good data, but it's not a definitive data, but it is great data to have. And hopefully it helps you make an educated guess. And if it does, please use the links down below. It does greatly support the channel and come join my Patreon. I have a ton of giveaways and well, we'll leave it at that guys. If you're looking for a good ESC, these two Ticos are really great. There's some other ones also. I'll compile a list later on, but these right now, when you, if you're in doubt, just pick up these and save yourself a headache. And I'll leave it at that, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.